G'day lads. An exceedingly hot day has greeted the West Indies and Pakistan on the first day of their second test match at Sabina Park. Pakistan batted first in this game and after losing a succession of early wickets, recovered exceptionally through Baba Azam and forward Alam to finish at stumps uh, with the total of 4 for 212. The heat was a constant factor throughout the day, which was somewhat surprising that West Indies captain Craig Brathwaite only chose to bowl spin for eight overs. Seven or eight, depends if Mr Bonner is a spinner. I must admit, giving his, given his priority is to score runs with the blade, I'm not sure if he bowls some part-time spin. We saw two players in this game struck down with cramp, Josh De Silva after a very good day behind the stumps, and also followed alarm for 76. But before we get to those events, let's give you a summary of the day's play in its entirety. The West Indies team was largely unchanged their last match, with Captain Craig Braffrate opening up with Kieran Powell, followed by Bonner, Jermaine Blackwood, Roston Chase, Kyle Mayers, Jason Holder, Josh De Silva, Alzari Joseph, Kima Roach, and Jaden Seals, who took an excellent five-wicket haul in the previous match. Pakistan's 11 was Abid Ali, the talented opening batter, Imran Butt, Azza Ali, the stalwart of the Pakistan team, Baba Azam, Fawad Alam, the grand old man of Pakistan cricket, the enigmatic and brilliant Muhammad Rizwan, Fahim Ashraf, Hassan Ali, Nauman Ali, Shaheen Shah Afridi, and the exceptional ageless Muhammad Abbas. I apologise for not including similar adjectives there for the West Indies team. Obviously, they include the exceptionally talented holder, who has the consistent ability to bowl brilliant lines and lengths, the ageless roach with his consistent lines and lengths, and often and a far, at a far greater pace than holder, and the young and talented Alzari Joseph and Jaden Seals, who are both in the early stages of their career and have showed great promise on the international scene. Brathwaite is a capable opening, opening batter, and Blackwood, Chase and Mayers give some energy and fight to the middle order. It started off brilliantly for the West Indies, with Pakistan reeling initially with the total at 3 for 2 inside three inside 4 overs. Off the third ball of the day, Abid Ali, who had scored 1 so far, edged a ball sharp and low to Jermaine Blackwood's left. Blackwood took the catch excellently, and the brilliant Roach had his first wicket of the game. Soon after, Roach had his second victim to a good catch by De Silva, moving well to his right. Azar Ali prodded off his sixth ball and was out for a duck. It was a very solid catch from De Silva, who I must admit, and not must admit, he had a very good day behind the stumps. Josh De Silva is a more than capable to very good keeper off the quick bowlers, but he does need to work on his wicket keeping against the spin, as I outlined in an Instagram story following that first test match. Following on from that, Pakistan looked to build. However, Imran Butt was soon out for one of 12 deliveries. A good link ball from Seals had him prodding forward, and De Silva took another catch, this time far easier than previous. Pakistan was reeling after this successful review from Brathwaite, However, a massive partnership between the brilliant Barbarazm and Forward Alarm then took them out of danger. Initially, Barber was the more aggressive of the pair, striking Alzari Joseph particularly hard. He is such a complete player. Like, he doesn't have some of the elegance of the likes of Labashain and Coley, but he is still a superb player to watch, and he delivers exceptionally on the biggest stages. He was good off all lengths of deliveries, playing exceptionally late and not giving the chances the early Pakistani batters had by pushing hard at the ball. His draw in two successive balls off Alzari Joseph, he came forward to drive him expertly through mid off and then rocked back to crack him through mid through cover point to the boundary. It was an exceptional display from Barber, who initially, like I said, was the more aggressive partner, despite finishing with a lower strike rate. He was also exceptional off his pads in typical flamboyant Baba style. Fawad Lam, before he retired from cramp, also played an exceptional knock. Initially, like I said, he was the slower of the par of the pair before initially building his strike rate to just over 50. 
Like his technique allows, he is exceptional off anything on his pads and also off the spinners, he is a great player of anything short. His cutting and flicking are the highlights of his game and they were on show in this innings in which he scored 11 boundaries and made a very solid 76 before he was forced to retire hurt. I would just like to say I'm sorry if there's any interference in the background. My family is cooking right now. I asked for them to be somewhat quiet. It appears it has not worked. However, following forward alarm retiring hurt due to cramp, I'm sure he will return tomorrow, Baba Azam soon lost his wicket. Another great ball, full length from Roach, saw him prodding slightly late on the ball. The ball flew to Holder it in the slips, and he took an exceptional catch low down. This ball was very low to the ground, and Holder caught it expertly just above the turf. The West Indies could have smelled blood as the late as in the as the heat had somewhat abated, and the West Indies could have rammed their advantage home by taking some late late day wickets. However, it simply wasn't to be. Muhammad Rizwan and Fahim Ashraf played exceptionally well to guide Pakistan to the close at a solid platform to build at 4 for 212. Rizwan was slow, hitting only one boundary in his so far in his 22 not out, but Fahim was a bit more aggressive, striking at 48 compared with Rizwan's 38. Fahim was exceptional to anything over pitched, both down the ground and through the offside. He is a more than capable all-rounder, and it might be ironic, but he seems to have more batting ability than the much-hyped Kyle Mayers, who now has a limited record since his double ton, and is proving to be a far more effective bowler at test level than he is with the bat, averaging something like 19 with the ball, and opposed to something around 25 if you exclude his monumental double hundred, which obviously you can't, but it is an interesting stat to point out. Now let's talk about the bowling. Focusing on the negatives initially, I was a little bit surprised that Roston Chase only had seven overs on this day. It was an extremely hot day, and surely he or some other spinner like Jamel Warrican would have provided some respite for the quick bowlers. I think this could be an issue for the West Indies in their third bowling in the third innings of the game, where their bowlers may not be rested well enough to perform at the top of their game. It was surprising that Chase only bowled seven overs, most of them while while De Silva was keeping and not while his replacement uh, was ha- Hamilton, I believe, was wicket keeping. Mayers was economical but did not, did not really challenge the Pakistani batters who were more than happy to blunt him out. And then we have Al- Alzari Joseph, who was the big disappointment of the day. He was consistently I- he was consistently inconsistent with his lengths. Like the moment I highlighted where he was first too full, then too short to Barber Azam, there was no repetitive motion in his lengths. Unlike Seals and Roach, who seemed to hit that consistent spot on the fifth stump line day after day, ball after ball, over after over, Alzari Joseph is inconsistent. He has that raw pace and talent, but he just struggled to find any consistency on this day. He is a remarkable talent, but... I'm still not sure if he's entirely ready for test cricket. He was the he was the letdown of a outside of a decent day by the West Indies, who, despite their early start, were economical throughout the day, and if they are lucky, they may be able to rattle Pakistan out early tomorrow with the second new ball coming after six overs. Jaden Seals and Kemar Roach were simply superb. The younger man Seals only bowled eleven overs, but he was consistently fast and on perfect lengths. I don't consider him as quick as, quick as Roach. Uh, Seal is more between 130 and 137, whereas I would consider Roach to be 135 to 145 kilometers per hour. But they bowl very similarly. Seal consistently hits good lengths and moves the ball slightly off the seam and in the air. However, most of his wickets are down to consistently hitting good lengths. Similar to Roach. With the Duke's ball, Roach is an absolute handful. He consistently bowls perfect lines and lengths and was rewarded with three exceptional wickets today. He is such a star of this West Indies team and it's, a sh- and it's sort of a shame that he is not recognised more by bigger cricket fans. If he had come from either India, Australia or England, I'm sure he would be now known as one of the greatest fast bowlers the world has seen over the last 10 years. However, due to limited opportunities, unfortunately he will never get that acclaim and limelight. Overall, it was, a, it was probably a Pakistan's advantage on this day, giving them a solid position to build on day two of this test match. If the hot weather continues, it could be difficult for West Indies bowlers to fire, considering that 
Brathwaite seems to not rate chase in these conditions. However, with the second new ball coming six overs into day two, the West Indies do have a strong chance to wrest back the momentum if they can if they can remove one of one of Muhammad Rizwan and, and Fahim Ashraf, and then stop forward alarm from returning and battling onto a century if he indeed does so. I hope you have enjoyed this review. I apologise for any noise in the background from my family, and I hope to see you in the comments. Cheers, lads.